Hello, Miss Braves. Come see, come sat, is it, eh? Oh, Steve. Hi, Brian. Hi, son. You must have missed me. I was in the other bar. Were you? Yeah, but I thought I'd find you in here, mooning over each other like two sparrows up a drain pipe. <laughs> what's happening then, my man? What do you mean, what's happening? Well, you know, what's the scene? What are we doing tonight? Heavy drinking or up the pali the dance for a bit of chic to chic, huh? Well, it's all sort of undecided, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, we thought we might go to the pictures. Are we? What are we going to see? <laughs> well, uh, we thought we might go to a Jean-Luc Godard film. Jean-Luc Godard? French he is, Steve. Is that the one that starts off with this bloke slitting open a sheep's eyeball? No, it isn't. <laughs> oh, pity. I wouldn't have minded seeing that. Still, I expect this will be all right. What time's it start? Uh, Steve, uh, about tonight. I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but I'm not a man to beat about the bush. And once I've made up my mind to say something, I have to say it. Well, uh, I think Sonia would rather we went on her own. You don't want me to come, then? We tried to avoid me in the other bar. No. No. Oh, come if you want to. Only this time... Yeah, anything, Brian, anything. Do you mind if I sit next to Sonia? No. <laughs> I meant to tell you. Have we got a minute? Yeah. Well... I was keeping an eye out for you, and I spotted this one in the small ads. Suit you down to the mud flats. A car? Are you buying a car, Brian? Well, I was thinking of it. But what about the environment and the ecology and the depletion of non-renewable resources? Yes, I know, but... I thought we were committed to alternative technology. Here we go. Two wheels good, four wheels bad. I wouldn't expect <laughs> you to understand, Steve, but exhaust fumes cause serious physical damage. If it wasn't for the trees in Hyde Park, half the people in London would be dead. Yeah, no doubt half the dogs in London would be cocking their back legs to no avail. <laughs> it would just be a small car, Sonia, so we could get out into the countryside from time to time. You're listening, then? Snip. A runner. Tidy car. Oh, forget it. With an introduction like that, it already stands condemned. No, listen. Customised for Cortina. Wide wheels, spacers, roller bar, racing trim, twin carbs, power bulge, hand-painted coachwork. Genuine reason for sale, owner moving back to Burma. Oh, come on. <laughs> no, listen. Slight rust, engine needs a little attention, otherwise excellent condition throughout. He's telling you it's a wreck. Yeah, come on. No, listen. Full tax impost, MOT applied for, quick sale required, hence low price. How much? 17 quid. <laughs> 17 quid? It's a tollway job. It's not. That sounds like just about the worst car in the whole world. Yeah, look, Steve, we don't want some big flash gas guzzler with elastopass around the exhaust and blood dripping off the bumpers. Oh, I see. Not ethnic enough for you, eh? You want something that runs an old brand, do you? It's just not economical <laughs> enough, that's all. It's more the sort of thing you want, then, is it? Let's see. Oh, yes. Ex-Jesus Freak wishes to sell transcendental hippie wagon. Low <laughs> mileage, only used it for visiting his neighbour on Sundays. That more your cup of dandelion tea, is it? Look, Steve. Yes, Steve, if you're going to carry on like this at my birthday meal tomorrow, I might just include you out. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just making the point, you know, that you can take things a bit far. Simple needs and the simple wants. Man cannot live on sesame seeds alone, you know. No, nor can he live on chips, fags and beer either. Hey, just a minute. I get plenty of nutrition. I get a very varied diet. The only variation you get in your diet is using a different Chinese takeaway each night. We're going to miss the film, you know? Yes. Well, you're coming. Oh, look. If you're both fed up with me tagging along, and if you'd really rather go up the cinema on your own, well, just say so. I won't mind. I mean, do you really want me to come? The truth. Well, to be quite honest, Steve... Yes, Steve. If you want us to be really straight with you... Well... All right, I'll come. <laughs> What's this all about, then, Bray? <laughs> we need the sun to the glass. What's he going to do with that big fish? <laughs> Just watching your sea, weren't you? This is a mucky film, Brian. No, it's not. It's a widely acclaimed film of considerable artistic merit. Oh. <coughs> She's got a watermelon now. Oh, Steve! <laughs> Bloody hell, if you tried that in this country, they'd stop your doll money. Steve, <laughs> will you keep your voice down, you know? Well, there's no one else in here but dirty old man. Shh! <laughs> oh!
We're going up the car auction then, are we? If you're ever ready. I'm leaving the iron on so it can press your shirt. All right. <laughs> you really are the last word in sartorial elegance and personal hygiene, aren't you? Yeah, we can't all be as fussy as you. Just because you spend two hours a night putting a knife edge grease in your pyjamas. Where's my razor? Well, you left it, probably. Oh, here it is. I hope you haven't been using it again, because if you've run down the batteries... I haven't used your razor. You're always accusing me of tampering with your own things. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't actually use the razor. I just borrowed the batteries from my tranny. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Brian. It's quite all right, Steve. I don't feel dressed of an evening unless I've got half an inch of stubble poking out of my chin. I said I was sorry. What do you want me to do? Disembowel myself? <laughs> anyway, we're only going to a car auction. We're going straight on to Sonia's birthday party afterwards, aren't we? Oh, no, please, don't reproach yourself. I'll just put on a black polar neck, tell her I'm the six o'clock shadow out on chocolate deliveries. <laughs> You're not a moaner sometimes, aren't you? Hey, is there going to be anyone else at this meal, then? Yeah, some girl she works with at the playgroup. Oh, I hope she's not another one. Oh, another what? Another ecological, you know. Makes her knickers out of recycled paper bags. <laughs> Biodegradable bloomers, as recommended by the Friends of the Earth. Oh, <laughs> God! <sighs> Here you are, Brian. Get a pretty Laylee. Look at that, built to last. Tell me, Steve, why is it that every mechanical object that claps eyes on you dismantles itself? Fear. I quite believe it. Hey, look, Steve, isn't that your old van? Yeah, yeah, it could be. Oh, no. No, it's not mine. You sure? Yeah. Hasn't got a mattress in the back. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, dent on the roof and he kept banging your head, either. <laughs> Hey, now, what about that one? That's more like it. You're not serious. You don't want this. Why not? Well, it's not a car. It's a motorised dustbin. <laughs> That's a bad look, though, is it, isn't that? You reckon? Ah, well, it's been well looked after. There's not much rust. It's probably very economical on fuel. It probably runs on coal. That's why. <laughs> very sound, too. You can tell it's very sound. Oh, but it's ancient, though, Bry. What are you going to do for spares? Probably won't need any. In those days, they knew how to make cars. Why did they make this, then? <laughs> yes. Might need to advance a spark a fraction, I think. You can really tell that just by copying your look. Oh, yes. Experience, you see, Steve. You get to know the sounds. Practiced ear, you see. Oh. You hear that? What? Upholstery needs cleaning. <laughs> Don't care what you think, Steve. I'm going to put in a bid for this. Well, if you really want to buy it, we can get it a bit cheap. How? Another joke? No. Pretend to do something. <laughs> Look, when they auction the car, they have to drive it up to the front, don't they? Now, if we're a bit artful in the dodge, artful in the dodge, artful in the dodge, and give it a knobbling, they'll have to push the car up because they won't be able to drive it. I see. And no one else will bid on it. Exactly. They'll say, aye, aye, here's a ropey motor, won't have that in the carport, and you get it cheap. No. Oh, but come on, you might get it 50, 60 quid cheaper. No, Steve, I said no. 
But that's a big saving in the smackaroos, though, isn't it? I mean, 50, 60 smackaroos isn't to be sneezed at. Come on, I'll look out the distributor. No, look, Steve, it's, it's nothing to do with sniffing at smackaroos or any other quaint customs. It's dishonest, and no. This is a car auction. You're expected to be dishonest. <laughs> I spend so much time here turning back millometers, even the wristwatches go anti-clockwise. <laughs> look, Steve, I appreciate your offering, but no. It's not right for one thing. And anyway... What? Well, someone might see us. Come on, Bry. Look, for the last time, Stephen, no. Oh, come on, let's do something delinquent. <laughs> I'm going up to the auction. Are you coming? Catch you up. Oh, I'll see you in a minute, then. For the last time, 280 over there. 280. And if I said 280, 280 going once, twice. Roll over there for 280. Take it away, please, John. Right. Over the next lot, please. The next, next lot is number 136. There you go, it's a mini. Right, do I hear 200? 200, 200, 210. 210, I have 210. Do I have 220? All right, the 210 it is. For the third time, sold at 210. Take it away. Right, gentlemen, the next lot is 154. 154. Can we have 154, please? Is there some delay with 154? <laughs> Thank you. All right, do I start the bidding at 100? 100, come on, 100. All right, I'll give 80, come on, 80 quid. 80, all right, the reserve on this is 60. I've got to add 60, I'll give 60. 60, I have 60. Any advance on 60? Come on. 70, I have 70. <laughs> 80, 90, 100, 110, 110, 120, 120, 130. 130, any advance on 130? All right, going once, twice. Sold to that gentleman there for 130 pounds. Take it away, please, John. <laughs> 163, 163 in your song. You got it then? Yes, I got it. I gave it a nobbling. I did realise. I told you to keep the price down. It's not bad for 130. Could have got it for 60, you know. Yeah, I know. Who was that stupid pillock bidding against? <laughs> that stupid pillock. Yeah. It was you. Oh. What time would you at Sonia's? Two seventy. Two seventy. Half an hour ago. Well, do you like it, Sonia? Even though we're late? Oh, I think it's really nice. Don't you, Steve? I think it's really nice, isn't it? Really, really nice. I think it's really nice. It's really nice. Yeah. I think it's really nice. Come in and have some food now, yeah? Yeah. Come on, Steve. Yeah. You might not realise this, but you're really nice. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Do you want to close the front door, Steve? Here's your present. Oh, thank you, Brian. Really tremendous. Lovely, thank you. Oh, yeah. Hey, uh, I got you something as well. Um, Happy birthday. Thank you, Steve. I tried to get you something you'd like. I'm sure I will. What is it? 50 joysticks and a set of acupuncture needles. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Oh, and uh, I got the book that goes with them. The acupuncture needles. Shows you where to put them in and how to twiddle them about. <laughs> the Chinese. Chinky. Do you open the wine, please, Brian? Hello. Oh, you haven't met, have you? This is Sandra. This is Brian. Hello. And Hello. Steve, Brian's brother. How are you? It won't be long. Would you give everyone some wine, Brian? You, uh... Sort of associated with Sonia, are you? I help out at the playgroup from time to time. Oh. You make peanut butter? <laughs> no. Sandals? No. Leather thongs, anything like that? No. Thank you. Do you and your brother make sandals? No. No, we don't make sandals, do we, Brian? <laughs> what? Sandals. We don't make sandals. Oh. 
No. No. Made a clog once, though. <laughs> School in woodworking classes. Wasn't supposed to be a clog, it just sort of ended up a clog. <laughs> Started off as a chest of drawers. <sighs> Need any help, Sonia? No, thank you, Brian. I've got it all together. What do you do? Well, I was in plumbing and ice cream. Now I'm back in plumbing again. Brian's sort of musical. Plays cash register in a filling station. <laughs> I'm also stood in to go to university, actually, Sandra. Don't take any notice of him. It's no use trying to whack us with pans you've yet to flash in. I'm just telling Sandra what I'm hoping to do, that's all. OK, Brian, could you clear that? All right, sit down. This is a really nice dish. I hope you like it. What is it? Well, Steve, it's eggplant, aubergines, stuffed with potted cheese, marinated in goat's yoghurt, with garlic, <laughs> onions, coriander, cloves and raisins. And for later on, we've got carrot cake. I've got to salad, Steve. Or a sausage or a couple of chops. Steve, please, we're guests here. Well, I'm not trying to be funny, but if I don't get me red meat, it affects me corpuscle situation. <laughs> No, I'm very into vegetarianism. Yeah, I do realise that. And you and the others might be quite happy to have the dismembered limbs and mutilated animals in your kitchen, but you're not going to find them in mine. What about the dismembered limbs of these here mutilated carrots, then? Look, let's not get into an argument about the rights and wrongs of vegetarianism tonight. It's supposed to be a birthday party, please. Yeah, well, I don't see the sense in it, that's all. I mean, if we were all vegetarians, what would the farmers do? Bye-bye, pigs, cheery old cows. Convert the milking parlour into a car wash and get the bull out inseminating cauliflowers. <laughs> Look, Steve, there it is. If you don't want it, don't eat it. <laughs> Sandra and I work together at the playgroup. Yes, so Sandra was saying, yes. Sandra also gives a considerable amount of support to elderly people who aren't able to dig their own gardens. Oh, you've got a rotivator, have you? <laughs> Do you like it then, Steve? Oh, yeah, it's, it's very, uh, It's very, uh... Tasty. Tasty. Mm. It's very tasty. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Oh, I'm glad you like it. I thought you would if you tried it, you know. Yeah, it's very tasty, yeah. It's very, very, very tasty. You haven't got a bottle of ketchup, have you? <laughs> you know, we were talking about the breastfeeding situation the other day. What was that? <laughs> well, a friend of Sandra's was asked to leave a restaurant when she tried to feed her baby at the table. Quite right, too. Yeah. Do you mean quite right, too? Would put you off your food, wouldn't it? I mean, imagine looking up from your soup to clap eyes on some ravenous nipper tucking into a 36 cup. <laughs> make you feel ill, wouldn't it? Why should it make anyone feel ill, Steve? Well, it makes me feel ill. Doesn't it make you feel ill, Bray? No, not particularly. Look, Steve, smoking's a pretty disgusting habit. People can smoke in restaurants. Why can't they feed their babies there? Well, they're too big to go in the ashtrays, aren't they? <laughs> Steve. Oh, well, I think they should sort of, uh, sort of set aside another room, you know, sort of ladies, gents and guzzling rooms. Sometimes, Steve, you're such a shallow puddle, a blue bottle could walk over you, not even get his ankles wet. <laughs> guzzling rooms. <laughs> Going to get a patent pending on that one, Steve. I can see that one being enshrined in the archives, along with the square wheel and the underwater hang gliding club. <laughs> well, what's the matter? What have I said? Oh, do you want some more, Brian? Oh, uh, thank you. Yes, lovely. <laughs> I didn't tell you, Sonia. Someone tried to attack me the other night. Attack you? Do you want to talk about this, Sandra? Do you want to talk about this to us? Cos we're your friends, you know, Sandra. I mean, do you want to share this bad experience with us? If you do, we'll try and share it with you, you know? Well, I was just going to say that this guy, he followed me home from work. And as I was going across the park, well, he came up behind... Oh, men really are pigs! <laughs> you really are pigs, you know? You're just nothing but pigs! Oh. Brian, pass the salt with your trotter, will you? <laughs> so, so, you're overreacting a bit. Do you think all 
all caring, committed, passionate people are overreacting, Brian. Well, no, but saying all men are pigs is just like saying the Scottish are mean and the Irish are thick. It's just, it's just bigoted. It's not the same thing at all. It's a totally different situation with all new yardsticks. Well, in some cases, your yardstick measures three foot. In other cases, two foot six inches. If the situation changes, the criteria can't remain the same. They cease to be viable and alternatives have to be found. You only have to look at the situation in South Africa. What about the situation in South Africa? Well, last I heard, spears were £2.50 a dozen. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to pour oil on troubled waters. <laughs> I think it should be happy birthday to Sonia. Uh, thanks for a lovely meal. Yeah. Happy birthday to Sonia. And thanks for a lovely meal. <laughs> What's the matter? I think I'm going to be sick. <laughs> For heaven's sake, go and sit down. <laughs> Here you are. You don't deserve anything after your behaviour tonight. Oh, come on, it wasn't my fault. If Sonia will insist on ramming vegetarianism and poached egg plants down my throat, she ought to expect the odd chunder on the table. <laughs> oh, well, every hostess does, Steve, naturally. It's just tomato juice. Didn't you put a vodka in it? And to cap it all, she doesn't blame you for doing it. She blames me for bringing you and letting you do it. Well, there's something you can do to get me back in her good books. It's not up to me. If you want re-inclusion in Sonia's yellow pages, you can let your own little fingers do the walking. Uh, well, walking is just what I had in mind. Sonia still needs some people for Saturday. For what? A sponsored hike, pushing a pram eight miles along the Grand Union Canal. Oh, no way, Brian. If you think I'm pushing some big organical grot bag all full of wind and soya beans eight miles up a towpath and a rickshaw from Mother Care, you can think again. <laughs> What's it in aid of, anyway? Charity. You know Sonia's always trying to raise money for charity. Oh, is this the one for distressed hippies, aging acid heads and the sons of gentle freaks living in rented hallucinations and suffering from nuclear piles? Actually, it's for the little children in the playgroup. Honestly, a pram push. Daft things that get done in the name of charity. Well, come on the charity hike, then. Well, I suppose it's better than walking the streets. Well, that's a relief, because I've already put your name down. <laughs> then you'll just have to pluck it up again, won't you? You've got no right doing that without prior consultation. You're only older than me, you know. You're not of higher rank. You can't assign me to tasks. I'm not your employee. Look, it's one day out of your scraggy existence, not a fiver out of your wallet. I refuse to be coerced. I am not going. That girl Sandra will be there. I'll come. <laughs> hey, about Sandra. What? Well, if you're thinking of getting involved with her, there's something you ought to know. She's got a baby. Oh. She got an unwanted, has she? Well, unwanted or not, she's got it. Bit of a one-parent situation, eh? Just telling her, that's all. What happened to the father? He was last seen going up the motorway, staying determinedly single at 90 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the way. If the girl's not on the pill, the bloke's soon on his bike. Uh, you're like that yourself, though, aren't you, Steve? You think anything with two wheels and a saddle is some form of birth control? <laughs> hey, go on, then. Get him in. Let's get our strength up for tomorrow, eh? It's your round. Stomach, Brian. You know, I can't move or anything. You know, Brian, it makes me really angry to think that for so long men have just been... Well, pushing women around. Well, no one's gonna push me around. I know what you mean. Oh, drink. It's really nice here, isn't it? Well, that's why I wanted the car, you see, Sonia, so we could come out to places like this. Oh, I'm sorry if I got a little heavy. Oh, forget it. It's nice here, though, isn't it? I like the country. Yeah. You're so totally surrounded by living things. You know, plants and grass and trees and rabbits. There's some really freaky rabbits in the country. You know, just hopping around, doing their own thing. And badgers. There's some really nice badgers in the country. That's what I'd like, though. A narrow boat like that one. You've got everything there. Self-sufficiency, mobility. Just like a place of your own. I've always wanted a place of my own. Can't see me getting any sort of mortgage, though. I'd live on a boat. I think a boat would be a really great place, you know, Brian. Yeah. 
for bringing up babies. <laughs> For a while, do you? My arms were aching. No, I don't mind. Steve. Sorry. <laughs> yes, Andrew. Yes. Well, Brian was saying that. Well, that you've got a baby. Yes, I have. I know it's none of my business. I mean, tell me to you know off if you want. But what happened to the bloke? He... Well, he just didn't want to know. It was that simple. I expect it's difficult, eh? <laughs> it can be. Well, for you to go out in the evenings. I mean, if anybody asked you out, I don't suppose you'd be able to go, would you? Get a babysitter. Like today. Well, in that case, could you, would you, give us another tissue, please? <laughs> that child's far too young to be smoking, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the lift. Thanks for a nice day. Must have raised a few, Bob, eh? Yes, well, good night. Good night. Good night. Steve, are you getting back in the car or what? I wanted to ask her out. She was waiting for you to. Really? Mm. I'll be back in a sec. She's a nice girl, that Sandra. She's had a lot of problems, you know. Hey, what happened when that bloke attacked her? Did you ever hear the end of the story? Well, she's done self-defence. She broke his arm. <laughs> I'm sorry, Brian. I'm sorry, Sonia. He just ran up behind me. I didn't mean to. I didn't know it was Steve. Steve? What is it? 